Uh, Dangi joins us now, macro and uh, macro advisor and uh, investor to understand where he feels markets, risk and uh, other cycles are added. Manish, you've been on the button, my friend, in getting the macro and the positioning of currency market and the bond market right. A lot of uh, sell-off has happened. Currency has collapsed, yields have shot up, equity markets have seen a risk-off moment. Bitcoin has, I mean, Bitcoin has got smoked. Smoked is the right word. Are mm. we nearing the end of the pain or there is still some more flush out left? So uh, it's a two part answer, uh, uh, Nikon, you know, and you, you're right from a timing standpoint, it sort of increasingly appears to me that we are nearing an end, you know, perhaps three, four months of a uh, um, sort of pain ahead and I think we'll have clearer skies, perhaps in Diwali, uh, during Diwali or December. Uh, but the final flush, I think, is still um, is, is left. And, you know, I, I think uh, the, that, that, that that's the deepest part, you know, the, the most painful part for a, a typical investor who sort of was naive in getting into markets and stuck with FOMO and, you know, got into stuff, you know, which promised few things and but did not deliver to him as per expectation so so in a sense you know it's both both parts are true you know we are nearing an end the macro is no more as dark red as it was appearing in october november december that we were discussing it's turning amber again and perhaps it's the beginning of end you know it's you know to use a cliche you know so to that extent uh, maybe a clearer skies ahead in a couple of months time when you say diwali are you Waiting for a time-wise turn because the next three months, if time correction kicks in, things will look up and things will get better. Or are you waiting for that uh, sledgehammer kind of and sell-off, which is that last part is the most painful part. And when that arrives, doesn't matter. It is only or Diwali. You need to buy. Even if it is 15th August, ka chutti, you have to buy. You know, I'm sort of, I, I, I may have appeared as if I were foretelling. Of course, I'm not. And I have no sense exactly when would it play out. I'm just giving a sense that, you know, given given how much has gone under the bridge, you know, perhaps the climax is closer. So Diwali is just a date, you know, winter perhaps. Um, what I'm waiting for, of course, from a market timing point of view, because I'm a timing guy, is the final flush, which essentially coincides with, um, liquidation and uh, a liquidation of positions of naive investors. Um, from a pure macro point of view, Nikon, so I'm looking at uh, uh, solving two problems that you know the world economy has to solve. One uh, that it has to solve for the energy crisis, uh, and and for that the technical solution of that is you know solution of you Russia Ukraine. Um, it is very likely that Russia would use this weaponry of actually squeezing energy for Europe in winter and actually would make things significantly worse than where we are right now. So I'm not trying to give an impression that things are fine now. It's just that a lot of pain is in already. But I, my sense is that the crude perhaps would peak uh, during winter at $140, $50. And that would be quite painful for asset markets. Second thing that we have to solve uh, for macro is financial conditions in US, you know. They have tightened significantly, but then central bankers across the world, but more specifically in US are actually um, haunted by the ghost of 1970s. And perhaps we are not in 1970s, but that just doesn't matter what you and I think, you know, what central bankers think is more important. They need to sort of clear this perception that no, we are not in 70s. And then, you know, the waste price spiral is not likely to happen to the extent that it did in 1970s. No one knows for sure, but then let's sort of have this cleared in the next couple of months. We need to see the core PC in US, core inflation in Europe actually come off uh, from where it is right now. We need to see that the shelter inflation is not resulting in um, sort of significantly higher core inflation. So all of that has to happen in the next three, four months, I assume, would have played out. And then, which is why I'm arguing that perhaps we'll have clearer skies. Hmm. So Manish, you're saying that uh, the climax is still ahead, but this is not a time to short the markets anymore. Is that the clear message? I mean, I, 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 I can't sort of say better than that. It, but this is the precise point I've been making for the last one month that the time to short bond and equity both are behind us, you know. So uh, 
you know, I mean, I, I say, if you remember, you know, July, August, September, October, I sort of caution people that don't get stuck with FOMO, stay out of small and mid caps. If at all, you're a compulsive investor, just be an index. That's about it. Now I'm doing the reverse of it. I'm saying, do not be too courageous now. Um, it's bad, but then it's not, it's not a setup in which, you know, you can short bonds at 760 because they're 160 basis point higher than where they were last monsoon. And equities, because there are 20% cheaper from uh, forward P uh, multiple standpoint versus last monsoon and, and winter. So, so time to short is clearly behind us, but that does not mean that we quickly jump to time to go long, you know? I mean, it's, it's a, the classic hold, um, you know, that, okay, you can stay out, chill, wait, uh, stay in the mountains, you know, for a few more months. Why is it that Manish Dangi is in a hoodie? Where are you, Manish? Oh, no, no, you I mean, I was in T-shirt and someone forced me to wear a jacket because I ought to look formal. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I mean, tactically then, Manish, what do you do? Do you stay defensive? What's the next best trade? I mean, clearly long dollar seems to be it. Absolutely. So, Aisha, absolutely, you know, I've been, you know, whoever can do, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm aware that not too many people can actually pile on to this trade, but I have been sharing with you as well and with your audience for last many months that stay long dollar, convert as much of your net worth into dollar, not direct, not by doing LRS. You know, you'll be surprised in the next few months, there are going to be massive restrictions coming uh, to move money out of India, given the mess that we are in, in terms of current account deficit. But, you know, simply through long dollar uh, futures, you know, you could actually sort of preserve your, uh, wealth in dollar terms. So I think that's a sort of a clear trade even now. And so therefore, the, in the financial markets, the only short trade is actually short INR and long dollar. Uh, now, what do you do with money? I think I would still say that long dollar cash is a good position to be in. Uh, one place where, you know, I've been trying to highlight uh, for last one month is a place where you perhaps can incrementally begin to dial risk is um, bond markets, you know, because they are sort of boiling right now. And perhaps you'll get better yield, but for a systemic and in, systematic investors, you know, these are good levels, you know, seven and a half, seven sixty on government bond. You actually got about eight percent annualized yield in state development loans, PSU bonds. These are sort of great levels, you know, to lock your money for 10 years. So I think uh, again, if you're an asset allocator, next trade will be bonds. So allocate, start allocating money to bonds in the next three, four months systematically, you know, perhaps you'll get higher and higher yield over the next three, six months. And that's when, you know, perhaps when yields peak is when the equities will bottom. Put numbers, Manish, let's put numbers. Uh, that's something more actionable, which our viewers can relate to. If yields have to sell off further, are we looking at 8% and beyond for 10 years? If currency has to go lower, are we looking at levels of 80 to 83? And if equities have to correct, are we looking at a 10, 15% correction in Nifty? Uh, so, so Nikon, you know, on bonds, uh, you know, you have a clearer sense of where it begins to hurt the economy significantly. And, you know, last 20 years of experience suggests that once they go past 8%, uh, one that we do not know where will it end, invariably at least thrice in last 20 years it ended up at nine percent they stay there for very short and sort of retrace so my sense is that we would easily we would easily get eight percent in this macro cycle given the fiscal dominance and and of course the mess of inflation in india but then after that how much more can it go uh, for a timing guy we will discuss again on your show but for an investors you know eight percent plus on what do you call it, government bond, is a cool deal. Uh, where will it peak? I have in my own assessment, you know, given what I understand of bond markets, I think they will peak, peak closer to 8.5, 860 in this cycle. But then, you know, I won't be too cheeky about it. You know, above 8, it's, it's a good deal to sort of dial. Pick up a good state development loan or PSU bank portfolio of uh, mutual funds, and that, that's a damn good deal for you. On currency, Nikun, I'm afraid a lot of macro adjustment still has to happen. Please understand that, you know, in the setup that we are in, Nikun, you know, where uh, financial conditions are too tight and are likely to get much tighter, 
an emerging market such as ours, which is energy deficient, cannot afford, and I must insist, cannot afford to run a 100, 125 billion dollar of current account deficit. So I think we are smoking if we think that you know, without a major macro adjustment through currency, you know, we can actually uh, go past this period. So I think currency will have to adjust. we are living through a period nikon where where there is an impossible trinity if we have to save currency we'll have to sacrifice bonds significantly if we have to sac- save bonds we'll have to sacrifice equity and if we have to save equity local equity we'll have to sacrifice currency significantly so my sense is that you know the best thing for rbi and i made this point many times over that pivot to weakening currency dramatically from here anyways firangi is actually leaving you and they will continue to leave for reasons which are very very fundamental and we can discuss them separately as on equities i think you know this is going to be positioning driven you know purely because far too much money nikon has come in with as i said naive beliefs that you know equities can deliver in compound and triple your money every 3 4 years i think it was a misperception missold and i think all of that money to a certain extent you know would have to meet the fate of a possibility where they have very very disappointing one two years and which is why i am afraid that a final flush would actually mean a significant drawdown in equity how much maybe 10 20 25 percent i don't know but yeah there could be significant flush more specifically in small and mid caps even now though they've corrected significantly but in general also i won't be surprised if it happens and this is nanta joining in on the conversation so just taking forward from what nikunj was saying the 8% bond yield you know you 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 started talking about 8% if i'm not mistaken about 6 to 7 months ago so the and now you're saying that the foreign investors will continue to sell we started to see the foreign investors uh, selling come down they're still selling but the velocity the way they were selling that has come down but the sense one is getting from speaking to you is uh, the pain is very much going to continue we need to keep relying on the shock absorbers which are the domestic investors Absolutely, and you know, I mean, uh, it, it, I I don't know if we've discussed, but I made this point many times that you know, do not look at foreign investors' reaction function through the lens of you know you being rich or cheap, or you are a high growth or a low growth economy. Uh, you know, my point is that see, then you know, I want I want to sort of explain this in a very simply that who is the one who is selling? You know, it's my dad and your dad, perhaps you know, crossing sixty five is the one who is a seller of equity in the world. because he is retiring you know he has to draw down on his income so when reti- when people retire they sell equity because they are the ones particularly in developed markets had allocated significant of, amount of capital and they are exiting but who is the one who is buying a guy you know who is in late 30s and 40s is actually incrementally saving a lot of money and has risk appetite to actually buy equity so so the the basically the buyer and seller are these two fellows you know in the midst of lot of volatility and billions in dollars of volumes you know the truth is this that the old guy is selling and a young guy or a middle aged guy is buying now the answer what would foreign investors do is that where do they come from they come from places where the population is aging and my sense is that in us particularly let's say the boomers you know are now in mass retiring and that's true for many other parts of the world including china and you know they will be actually incrementally selling so their capital was the one which was coming to you for last 20 30 years because they were saving lots of money now they are actually retiring and you know for their own needs you know medical or otherwise you know they are going to be drawing down and they are going to be selling you argentina mexico and what not and including in including us so which is why you know if you actually zoom out then i would say that the foreign investors and i made this point i remember in last monsoon to you onikuns that foreign investors are not the friends to sort of bank with you know they are not going to be coming back maybe they'll have a cyclical upturn here and there in etfs but broad narrative for me for next many years and decades is that you know foreigners will continue to exit and they no more the key support for indian market so again be careful of places where they flooded and gushed in their money and actually floated and bloated the asset valuations the reverse would actually continue to play for next many years okay so that's uh, your take when it comes to fii's you've already told us go long on the us dollar i also remember how you came i think 6 7 months ago right on et now saying the best thing you can do is buy farmland 
Do you still believe that? Yeah, so I mean, that was, uh, there's been long, you know, and farmlands, you know, people who track it are sort of, uh, there's, it's, there's a fire there actually, you know, sort of uh, stuff is 40, 50% higher and even higher since then, since October that I talked to you about it. And, and the idea was, mine was a little bit of a, uh, one is that it gets to be a, co, uh, you know, non-core inflation hedge because I was anticipating high crude, high, high fuel prices. How do you sort of allocate you know, you can actually buy a lot of pulses and, you know, maybe crude tankers. But the other simple way I thought was a farmland because, you know, yield would actually go up if the tomato prices and onion prices actually go up. So, which is what I anticipated and has play out, played out. Farmland actually is a proxy of inflation. You know, if the non-core, which is food inflation goes up or energy inflation goes up, farmland actually does, does well. My sense is that, yes, you know, it would continue to uh, do well. It's also had a, you know, seven, eight years of a bear market. So to a certain extent, relative to financial markets, both residential real estate as well as farmland is relatively cheaper, I would say. And I think it's sort of, for a small allocation for an, in, for an individual investor, it sort of makes sense. That's uh, Manish Dangi, the macro investor, for you right here on ET Now with his take on what's happening in the markets, expecting more pain uh, in the small cap, mid cap space. To definitely do not shut the market. Foreign investors likely to stay as sellers the way we've been seeing. Get used to 8% uh, bond deals. That's also coming up according to him. Thanks so much for being live with us today.